Good morning, lovelies. <laughs> How are you all? I hope you're well. <sighs> Finally back in the garden. I, I, I oh, dropping one. I actually got to the point I thought, I'm not going to get any gardening done in November at all. I almost kind of <laughs> think I jinxed myself at the end of October. Um, gosh, so October was warm, uh, very warm for October, but it was balmy, sunny, dry. <laughs> I And I sort of got my head down, I worked really hard in the garden. I've got mud on my glasses already. Worked really, really hard in the garden to get on top of things. Got to the end of October and I sort of thought, you know what? I've had this whole year of catch up and actually I feel like I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> yep, jinxed myself and I don't know if you remember I was saying there's just a couple of more big jobs to get done. The beans and the brassicas both in terms of uncovering them, getting them mulched with that straw. I just haven't had a chance. Um, November's gone pretty cold. We're in single digits. Now, I know for a lot of folk, that's not cold. Uh, and remember, it's not a competition. How we respond to the temperature is entirely subjective. I hate being cold. There's no two ways about it. I absolutely hate it. So some folk would simply not find this, what I'm, to, you know, these temperatures that I'm experiencing, they wouldn't find them cold at all, but I do. <laughs> it's not just the cold though, it's, um, I think it's a kind of a double whammy at the moment. I think it's a cumulative effect of being cold because it's cold at home. You know, I'm one of probably millions of people in the country not putting their heating on. So I'm cold indoors, I'm cold when I come out, I'm just cold all the time, not getting warm. I need to move a bit quicker today. But the damp, so, oh my goodness, November has been so wet. Now, <laughs> I'm supposed to be harvesting my dried beans today, but goodness me, they've, I mean, they've been washed. <laughs> <laughs> they've been in the wash rinse cycle 40 times already it has been an incredibly wet month it's been a record breaking wet month i should just say as well in terms of the cold yeah i know it's much colder in other places and for example we're even in the uk we're seeing on the news the massive dumping of snow in buffalo in new york state and buffalo is where our lovely jim lake effect gardener is and his channel is called the Lake Effect Garden. And we've been seeing in the news, they've been talking about the Lake Effect dumping of the snow. So yeah, but this, the, the rain, uh, it was Sunday evening, Sunday the 6th of November. I tuned into the weather report, which was sort of summing up the week we'd had but also looking for the week ahead. And in the report they were saying how, <clears throat> now bear in mind it was the 6th of October, it was the night after bonfire night, and I know that tons of bonfires up and down the country were canceled because of the weather. Um, yes, yeah, so that by the 6th of August, one fifth <laughs> of the way into the month, um, we'd already had more than a month's worth of rain and it hasn't stopped. <laughs> I might get some fresh black Churchills after all. Oh, yay. I'll talk about the rain sack. I've just seen Rusty's just sneaking back into the cold frame where I made him that little cosy bed. And it's obviously working because, firstly, all the blankets in there are really muddy, <laughs> where his little muddy paws have walked in. But the couple of times I have been to the garden in November for harvesting and harvest and get straight out again when he comes up to greet me he's warm because he's been in the cold frame so I think it's just enough of kind of warmth and coziness for him um yeah this rain um I mean we're always it's the UK this is you know our normal weather is 
is rain. Rain and mildness, that's us. Uh, and, you know, generally that's great for growing. So here I am doing the beans. It's my worst harvest ever because we didn't have our usual rain in the summer. My goodness, we're getting it now. So, yeah, it's just not been possible to garden for the last, so we're getting on for four weeks. Um, we've had a, a, the, the occasional dry day that we've had. It's sod's law that I've got something else happening that day. Oh, for those of you who watched the gift making session, one of those occasions was the baby shower. It was so lovely. The mobile wasn't ready, so I didn't get to see it yet. Uh, but the balm went down a treat. And actually everybody that was gifted things that day. Um, yeah, they've all really enjoyed their gifts. So, yeah, distracted. Yeah, so there have been a lot of days. It's just, when it has been dry, it's just not been possible to get here. Okay, so... The plan with these is I'm just stripping out any of the beans that I can find. Then I'm going to take the material off to crop, chop and drop it in situ. I've got some cardboard so I can then get it covered. Get the bean poles out. Um, folk often say to me, why don't you just leave the bean poles in, make life easier next year. But back to this wetness, of course, the poles staying in wet ground, they rot or they I mean, they'll rot anyway at some point, um, but they just rot more quickly if I leave them in the ground. So um, that's the plan with this session. And even as I'm stripping out the foliage, I'll keep my bucket handy. I'm see, I've already done the other side, but of course, of course I'm seeing ones that I've missed. So I'll keep my bucket handy. Um, to chuck them into not a vast amount up like every morsel every morsel is precious this year um yeah undoubtedly a terrible year for beans this year for me in this part of the UK and also with that rain apparently it's it's the east part the eastern side of the country that's being really clobbered so yeah that includes London oh I'm just thinking about it now I, I think I'm I think I should lift all the spots now because they're just gonna rot in the ground as well but I did want to ask you all um, can, I, can, I, can I snip as we chat I might just you going for a little walk because I've just spotted a few more here I might have to adjust you. You're on the wonk. Um, yeah, what, what, was the, what was your best harvest this year? You know, there's me. I said, oh, okay, let's start with what didn't turn out as well as you hoped. <clears throat> let's start with the slightly not best stuff first. What wasn't what you were hoping for? And... Is there a reason? Can you identify what went wrong, <laughs> as it were? Was it simply weather conditions? You know, we can't, we can't really do, well, yeah, we can't do anything about the weather, can we? Um, was it the soil conditions? Was it how you planted or sowed the seed? <clears throat> Did you plant things too closely? Uh, did things get swamped out by weeds? It may be that, you know, you had all good intentions this year, but then, you know, a life event happened and it kept you out of the garden. <clears throat> if that's the case, then, you know, hopefully, oopla, hopefully, you know, next you can write this year off and say, look, you know what? There are things beyond our control. Let's have a pep talk. <laughs> there are things beyond our control and whether that's the weather or, you know, life events. And sometimes you have to just be prepared to say, you know what, okay, let's close the chapter on this year. It wasn't great, but let's look forward to next year. Let's plan, let's use this not great year, if we can, as a learning <clears throat> experience. 
you know, we can always find positives, even in a negative year. So if you think about those things that didn't work, if it was something that you did, you know, maybe, maybe you sewed things too late. Um, maybe you weren't, didn't keep on top of the weeding, so the weeds choked your plants out. Those sorts of things. Have a really honest reflection to think, you know, was it something you did? Could you do better? And if it was, great, make a note of that. Think about that for next year and say to yourself, one of the things that went a bit wrong this year was my organisation. Um, you know, have a, again, it's about being realistic and honest with oneself. Have a think about your time, for example. So if, let's say, aside from life events and things going wrong, let's say none of that happened, but that you found that you really could only get to your allotment, say, twice a week for four hours at a time. So, okay, realistically, what can I do, <clears throat> excuse me, in eight hours a week? And with such a short amount of time, can you, at times when you're not in the garden, like, you know, a Sunday evening, I love my Sunday evenings for this. This is how I use my Sunday evenings. It's my organization time. I have all my, oh, blah. <laughs> and I'm talking late on a Sunday. It's usually 10 o'clock at night. But I have all my scraps of paper and bits and bobs of things I'm trying to remember. And it's not just for the garden, it's for everything. But I sit down and I think, what can I realistically get done next week? And maybe that's something you could do with your garden. Um, so if you break it down, if you know that, for instance, in the spring you need to prepare the beds, but you also need to start sewing and maybe the beds aren't ready, so you can think, I need to sew in pots or modules. And you've got those two four-hour sessions, right, okay, one of them is going to be for digging my beds and one of them is going to be for sowing seeds. So, yeah, use, use the not-great-stuff from this year to hopefully plan <coughs> for next year. And if it's things like the weather, well, of course, we can't plan for that, can we? Um, you know, who knows? We've, we've talked about this a little bit before. Who knows if in the UK we're going to start having these hot, long, dry summers. Does that mean we have to, we, we, we're going to rethink the kind of things we grow? Maybe we don't grow beans anymore. Maybe that's something we just say, well, I'll buy that and grow something else. <laughs> but then we could have a really wet summer that's perfect for beans. But yeah, um, what didn't work this year? Don't despair from it learn from it it could be something that you can turn around next year but what did work this year for you what was what was your best thing this year um i think un, well i think undoubtedly in my garden it was tomatoes the squash did really well um let's see what else the calendula did really well they always do well but yeah the squash did the squash did pretty well, but undoubtedly, undoubtedly, I saw one, where was it? <laughs> I might have to leave the rest until I'm actually taking a photo shot. Undoubtedly the tomatoes were the stars this year, the absolute stars. Um, now, I think a few folk thought that I was really late with my tomatoes. I was a little bit late to plant them, but I wasn't late to sow them, and I think that was the key. I sowed them at my usual time, which is around the end, sort of mid-March to the end of March. Pricked them up, potted them on, da 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 da. So by the time they did get planted, yes, they were late to be planted, but they were like big, sturdy plants, of the same size as they would have been if I'd got them planted earlier. If you see what I mean. So again, have a think about all your successes this year. Uh, what worked really well? Why did they work really well? Is there a reason that you can identify that they worked well? So for me, the tomatoes, the reason was one, a lovely warm, long summer, loads of sunshine hours, but I was really vigilant with my watering. I kept them well watered. Now, 
can't do anything about the sunshine. <laughs> So that might not, that's not something I can control next year, but I can sort of remind myself, okay, you know, if, if nothing else, make sure that the tomatoes are watered. I, I honestly don't know if I'll grow tomatoes next year just because I want to keep the garden really low maintenance. Uh, and as I was explaining, I'm not gonna start any seeds at home. I can't have the house messed up like that. Maybe I'll try and start a few in the cold frame. I don't know, but they are quite a high maintenance plant, which is why I may not grow them. Maybe I have to grow just one because I do love my tomato cares. But yeah, what were your successes? What was your best veg this year? And was any of that down to you? Or was it, was it all down to mother nature? <laughs> my tomato success? I'm gonna give that one to mother nature. <laughs> She earned that one this year. Right, I think I need to start tackling all this foliage, get it all down. Oh, just to say as well, before I, I hack into all of this, with the, with the plants, with the roots, I could cut the plants off at the roots, leave all the roots in the ground, because the, they develop little nodules of nitrogen on the roots, and once the plants cut off, that nitrogen then gets released into the soil. Great. Or I can just, as I'm probably planning to do today, because I'm so <laughs> like that, um, take them out all chopped up on the ground. It'll still end up in the, in the ground. I've got to show you behind you because it's so cute. Hang on a tick. <laughs> the sun's coming out and it's making it perfect for a certain someone behind you. Isn't that the cutest sight? Oh, he's so happy in there. The thing that gets me with Rusty that just melts me every time is those little pink paddy paws. Oh, what an adorable little buddy. Ah, oh, if I thought I could get away with it, you know, with his owners not noticing, I'd like to kidnap him for a week and have him at home to deal with the mice and basically to cuddle. But yeah, that ain't gonna get my um, job here done, is it? Just gazing at our gorgeous Rusty. Right, on with the work. <laughs> Normally, to do this job, um, I would sit there, there would be far less foliage normally at this time of year, but it just shows how warm we were much later into the year so yeah there wouldn't be this amount of foliage most of it would have dropped i could access the poles really easily just go and snip all my little string knots and then sort of pull out one pole at a time scoot shoot scoot the plant matter up off over the end chop it done i can't even get into the poles yet so i'm just gonna start by goodness me thinning out some of this foliage but you know what fine it's all green uh, nice for composting the other thing I wanted to say about this job today is and I'm revealing more beans of course which is what I expected I've just seen down there one really fresh gigantus it might have one or two beans in it I want to eat that tonight. Um, oh God, it's really laden. This isn't, believe it or not, this is not my favourite job of the year. It's a bit tedious. I think it's possibly not one of my favourite jobs because it's one of the cold month jobs and it, Obviously, like I've said a gazillion times already, don't like the cold. But yeah, I think it's because it's quite a lot of it's quite static and I'm usually doing it in the cold month. So no, it's not my favorite job. But you know what? It's a very um, sort of tedious, repetitive job. So I can do it. It's a bit sort of like it's a bit of a mindless job. Don't need to think about it. I'm just 
grab a handful, chop, 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 looking out for, um, looking out for any beans I've missed. But otherwise, yeah, I can sort of zone out a bit. And that's kind of first pole out, but still loads of plant material. That's kind of how I tackle these jobs. Um, so this job, but also jobs like weeding, which I know for a lot of people is their, is their I hate job. And so I have to watch where I'm putting these sticks, <laughs> just watching where I'm putting the poles because Rosie snuck up behind me. Yeah, if you know you're going to do a tedious job, oh, even even before you come to the garden, plant a thought in your own mind. Plant a thought of, in other words, give yourself something to think about. It might be that while you're doing it, you might want to think about a week of meals, a week of menus. So then when you get home from doing the job, you can write all that down and plan your shopping and harvesting accordingly. It might be that you want to think about friends, what friends are up to. I think this is a lovely one, actually. A friend of mine across the waves uh, does a lot of jam and preserve making to sell for Christmas. And she has this lovely habit. Hello, Jackie, by the way. She has a lovely habit when she's pitting, stoning, I don't know what you call it, the damsons. Is it called pitting or stoning? Stoning. Pitting if it's cherries. Oh, by the way, you might have guessed, we're just chatting today. We're just hanging in the garden and chatting. Yeah, she, she has this really, really beautiful habit and it's one that I sort of adopt in the garden for jobs like this with each oh precious 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 don't lose <laughs> with each stone she takes out she thinks of a particular friend and just sort of thinks of them wishes them well puts out warm positive vibes into the universe for that friend and I think that's just absolutely gorgeous so maybe that's something else you could do whilst tackling your tedious jobs is to just think of others or let's say you know come up with a shopping list my mind goes literally all over the place when I'm doing this kind of job. In a minute, I'll no doubt my brain will, for whatever reason, just think of some, I don't know, random tune from the 80s. <laughs> and then I'll start singing to myself or humming. There are other folk around today. Because it's a dry day, the first dry day in ages, there are other folk around. So I might not sing over the top of my lungs today, I might just choose to hum instead. Do a job like this and I can as I'm doing it, I can sort of, as I'm snipping, I can be looking around the garden and thinking about next year. I mean, it's a bit, it'll be weird for me this year because obviously I'm not the garden plant. Oh, la la. Those roots have stayed down. Yeah, the garden plan for next year is really minimal. But in previous years, this is the kind of day when... Oh, I got a bit of root out. When I can be looking at the garden as I'm snipping. I've just got my barrow here, so I, I don't have to be that accurate. And besides, it's all going to just be scooched out onto the bed. Um, yeah, I can, I can be looking at the various beds and thinking... Was that the best position for something? Did it get enough sunshine? Was the row in front? Because the, the garden that way is south, 
this way is north so I try to have the shortest things at the front and build up the height so nothing at the front is in shade but that's the sort of thing as you're in your garden you can think about did plants get shaded out this year I should be back to that kind of reviewing you know if things didn't work why didn't they work perhaps something was too shaded or like say with something like celery spinach they do better to have a bit of dappled light rather than, rather than being in full sunshine so excuse me a second I'm down here so maybe next year think okay change the position is there somewhere that you can put them that's a bit shadier if there's nowhere on your site that's shady because the whole thing is in full sun can you create shade can you create shade for them with plants so for instance on the back side of the beans that area down there is quite shady that would be perfect if you're not going to have the plants to create shade is is thinking about shade cloth something to think about so yeah we're you know we're firmly we're firmly heading into winter and you know we're, we're hardly going to be in our gardens at all apart from to harvest we obviously we we all start to miss garden action but it's a great time you know to just start thinking about next year to plan for next year and if you're still you know quite a beginner gardener you you feel a bit oh you know unsure you know now's the time to pop down to the library to get some gardening books out you know watch watch videos hello <laughs> watch gardening videos and if you're thinking about next year you could find a channel that you like whether it's mine or someone else's and go back and look at their videos from say March and April of this year so you can think about your March and April next year um, yeah it's definitely it we're definitely in that season where we're going to be indoor gardeners i.e we're not gonna be out here doing it but we can be planning for next year plan 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 you know in life you might not want to be too much of a planner you might not like that kind of rigidity of being highly organized you might like to you know your natural default setting maybe that you're more spontaneous and you wing it and you know what that's great in so many ways and so many parts of your life but I think the one place you do need to be organized if you want to make the most of it when you're great is when you're growing vegetables growing veg you know I, I quite often say there's there's no sort of right and wrong it's a part of us but it's a bit of sunshine but actually there are rights and wrongs when it comes to you know timings for sowing and thinning and pricking and all those kind of things so yeah if you're if you know that you're a bit of a, a bit of a last minute dot com person use this time now over the winter to get yourself organized right that's four poles done out of what was it, out of 24 it's gonna take me ages it's time for me to stop talking to you now and start singing to myself oh nearly at the halfway point it is taking me <laughs> ages so I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now because uh, I'm going to be at it for another I don't know another hour or so but look the sun's coming out it's warming me up it's glorious I really do hope that a lot of you can still get some oh, blah, some garden time but you know what for those of you who can't get outside, either it's just too biting cold or you're under four feet of snow already, now's the perfect time to start dreaming. Dream your most dreamy garden for next year. Start dreaming and start planning. Oh, seed catalogue time, eh? And I was just thinking now, something I used to do, but... <laughs> I haven't done for ages because 
you know, I'm always rushing and da da da. And because the garden has become just such a practical thing. Something I used to do when I was doing my plan for the year, I used to paint it, I used to do a watercolour plan of the garden. And I absolutely loved doing that. You know, a Sunday afternoon in winter, with my table right up in the window to get the light. And just dreaming with my paintbrush. Loved it. I've still got most of my watercolours in a notebook somewhere. I might see if I can find them to share with you. But I was thinking, you know what, maybe there are some of you who once upon a time used to love to paint and you haven't done any for ages. Well, maybe now is the perfect opportunity, a perfect excuse, combine the two things. Plan your garden, but plan it in watercolour. Make it as dreamy and beautiful as you want. Then sit down and plan out how you're going to achieve it. <laughs> so, on that thought, yeah. Please all look after yourselves. Stay cosy if you can. I will see you again really soon. What should we do next? I think we'll do something, yeah, probably indoors. <laughs> Get a bit warmer. Until then, cheerio.